Well, hello and welcome. In this presentation, we will be looking at linear relationships, sometimes called linear algebra, and today we will be looking at the concept of gradient. Now, before we start that, let's consider some of our key terminology. Now, this here is quite often referred to as a Cartesian plane. It has four quadrants, quadrant one, two, three, four, and in the center where both the y-axis and the x-axis uh, of the value zero, we call that point there the origin. This here is commonly referred to as a point. And our point can have a set of coordinates. The coordinates for this point are x equals 2 and y equals 3. So the first value is always the x. When we have this here, it's probably best is called a line. I can't think of a better name to give that. And you'll notice the arrowheads indicate that a line will go on in direct forever in both directions. If the line stops between two points, such as point B and point A, it is called a line segment. And if we want to describe that line, we might say it's quite steep or it has a set gradient. Now the gradient is the measure of the steepness of a line and it can be calculated by using the expression rise over run or how far do I go up? In other words, that's my rise upwards. How far do I go across? That's my acrossness or my run. Now, so if I was looking at this particular line here and I wanted to go from A to B, well, I could say, how far do I go up? Well, I go up this number of units, one, two, three, four. So I could say my rise is four, and then I could ask myself, how far do I go across? One, two, three. That there is my run, the length of that line. So I could say my gradient is four over three. There's no need to simplify that fraction. Just leave it as four over three. It makes, a lot, makes life a lot easier if you ever have to plot the lines. Let's look at another example. This time, again, how far do I go up? What is my rise? Well, my rise is just from there to there. And what is my run? Whoops, across here. So how many units across? One, two, three, four, five. So my rise was the one. My run is the five. So my gradient will be one over five or one fifth. Now, we can work across quadrants. So you can see I'm in quadrant one and quadrant three. My rise, same deal, all the way up here. Now I count those number of units, there will be seven. And my run is all the way along here. Oops, there we go. If I count those units across there, there are nine. So my gradient, like this time, will be seven over nine. Now, sometimes, if you notice in the previous example, my line was going up. This example here, my line is going downwards. I always read these lines left to right. 
and this line here is going down. So I still have to draw a little triangle in here to work out, well, I'm not really going up anymore. I'll actually be going down. So you could think of that as a negative rise. Again, I count my units. One, two, three, four. And I've put a negative sign here to indicate I'm going downwards. And my run is still across left to right. So, yeah, a little bit, a bit of trouble. Selecting this one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, you could say that I've gone down four, across seven. That is my gradient. That's the description of the steepness of the line segment between A and B. This one here. Well, the triangle is quite easy to see. Again, am I going up or down? You can see that I'm going down. And I'm going down five units and I'm going across four. So my rise will be negative five. My run will be four. So my gradient will be negative five over four. Now, this particular, I suppose, example of just counting the number of unit squares works in most situations. However, if I get really big numbers, and it, you know, say a number you know, from a thousand or two thousand or a million, it's not possible to count the number of unit squares. So, what I can do is to consider to use the generalized form. Now, I'll, I'll give an example of this. Now, if I'm looking at a line between point A and point B, I can say the coordinates of this line here, well, it'll, the first point here, A, will have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And that one here just indicates it's the first coordinate pair. So, it has x being 2, y being 3. Now, b is my second coordinate pair. That's why I put a, a little 2 here, a little suffix 2. Now, that also has coordinate pair of 5, x is 5, y is 4. I can use this formula here and substitute the values of y and the values of x to calculate the gradient. m is the letter that I use to characterize the gradient. There's no real idea why the letter m is used. Even if you go looking on Google, there are different stories. So let's just say the letter that we use for it, gradient is m and just leave it at there. So I substitute the value of y2 here. See my y2 is the value of 4. My y1 is the value of 3. So that one goes there. So 4 minus 3. Then look at the values of x. My value of x2 is 5. My value of x1 is 2. So 5 minus 2. This will give you 1 divided by 3, so you could say my gradient is one third. And if we want to do this, the square counting exercise again, you could see that I've gone up one and I've gone across three. So both approaches give the same answer. Next example. Well, let's quickly look here. Look at our coordinates for x point one, the a point, negative five is my x, negative 2 is my y. Look at my b point. x2 is 1, y2 is 5. So I can populate or substitute these values here into my equation. I end up with 5 minus negative 2. That's on the top of the fraction. It's this bit here, 5 minus negative 2. And look at my x2 minus x1. So 1 minus 
negative 5. 1 minus negative 5. When you, when you are subtracting a negative, that becomes a plus operation. So 5 plus 2, 7. 1 plus 5 is 6. And you may get a question such as this, where you're asked to calculate the gradient between two points and you're not even given the Cartesian plane. So what I like to do is identify one set of points, such as 3, 4 as being x1, y1, the other set of points as being x2, y2. Then I can put those into this equation. So my y2 minus y1. So y2 is 8, y1 is 4. So 8 minus 4 divided by my x2, which is 5, minus my x1, which is 3. So working through the maths, we end up with a gradient of 2 over 1, which can be simplified to 2. It's probably better to leave it as 2 over 1. And that is it for this particular presentation. So just remember, gradient is the steepness of a line. The steeper the line, the higher the number. Also, a positive gradient indicates a line is going up. A negative line number of gradient indicates the line is going downwards uh, such as this one here. So until next time, good maths. Bye for now.